Poop. Doo doo. Number two. Kaka. Crap. Shit. There's a ton of it, and dozens of words to describe it. But for 2.6 billion people around the globe, there's no place to actually do it. Imagine that. No reliable sanitary toilet. What would you do? Well, what you have to do: use anything you can find. Which means, in no time, you've got a big pile of problems, like diseases, deadly diseases that are filling half the hospital beds in developing countries. A serious, well, crappy scenario that, by working in partnership, we can change. How? By doing something that hasn't been done for centuries: reinventing the toilet. The flush toilet, as you and I know it. Requires a massive amount of sewer infrastructure and immense amounts of water. Two things increasingly hard to come by. Now is the time to eliminate the health hazards, recycle waste, and turn crap into valuable resources like clean burning fuel, fertilizer, and believe it or not, fresh water. Today our toilets can't do that, but the toilet of tomorrow can. Reinventing the toilet. Let's get our shit together and do it. Well, I have to uh, admit that's a different type of、uh, introduction than I'm usually used to.、Uh, before I start, first of all, I'd like to、uh, acknowledge the fact that I work at the research group,、uh, which、uh, includes、uh, graduate students、uh, and other professors from Oklahoma State, including、uh, Mason Richard from、uh, Vet Med and my colleague Gary Fouch、uh, from Chemical Engineering. We are one part of the Gates Foundation plan to try and help、uh, many, many people across the world. What I am proposing to tell you a little bit about today is not really for the United States. It has potential uses in the United States, which I might mention later, but it's not really for the United States. It's for a developing country. So the problem here is in developing nations,、uh, sewers are just not available.、Uh, flush toilets are not available. In the United States, many years ago, we had outhouses, all right. But even then, they realized the problems with that, and the civil engineers and the sanitation people have worked very diligently in the United States to make sure that. Our wastes are taken care of and disinfected to kill the bacteria.、Um, in other countries, developing countries, there's a problem. They don't have the infrastructure, they don't have the finances, they don't have the money, and they don't have the ability to collect it in a central location. So the Gates Foundation is interested in developing toilets、uh, and. Disinfecting the waste at a cost of about five cents per person per day. By the way, that's their goal.、Uh, whether they achieve that or not is up in the air still. And our goal here at Oklahoma State was to disinfect fecal material to produce an inert, dry, odor-free product that potentially has value. Now,、um, I get a lot of jokes about this, obviously, <laughs> and.、Uh, But、uh, my colleague Gary Fouch and myself,、uh, and this I must admit、uh, is mainly Gary's idea. But our initial thoughts was that feces really is is a viscous substance. All right, a viscous substance. It's kind of like peanut butter. <laughs> and one thing about viscous substances, if you take and you push them. Through a small hole, a dye, it'll get hot, and this is a well-known chemical engineering process called viscous heating. You're probably familiar with it in the fact that plastic injection, taking plastic, putting it through a dye, is how we do plastic injection molding. Plastic is a non-Newtonian fluid, and so is feces. Now, our concept—I laugh at the rotating things today here. Our concept is.、Um, Is that we have a rotating cylinder, all right, and we put in 
the feces between the outer cylinder and the inner cylinder and rotate it. All right? And we take, continuously feed it through, and so our conceptual design started off with a cone that will rotate inside of a shell. And these were some of our original drawings that we mocked up on what it might look like. And our thought was that the shear on the feces will occur between the gap of the shell and the cone. And high temperature will result, and this will kill microorganisms and help solve one of the problems, certainly not all the problems of 2.6 billion people, but one of the problems that uh, is not available in a lot of countries, and that's sewage treatment plants. We take sewage treatment plants for granted here in the United States. In fact, if I ask most of you where the sewage treatment plant was in Stillwater, would you really know? So the question is, we take it for granted here in the United States, but it's not available in other countries. Anyway, this was what we conceptualized it, and then we built it, the first one. And our fully instrumented reactor uh, is kind of a cute little thing. It's got a motor on it, all right. Uh, the part in the middle there is uh, where it's rotating. We add our specimens uh, <laughs> in that small hole by way of a uh, plunger. <laughs> and uh, it's corked. Uh, there's a little black cork there if you look closely. Uh, and that little black cork is where the product exits after it has uh, reached temperature. So as we rotate it, we put shear on it, it gets hotter. Now, I must admit, working with feces is not a very nice thing to do. And Oklahoma State University safety is one of the most important things that we strive for in engineering. And so to begin with, um, we decided that uh, we were not going to work with the real thing. And so uh, we started working with mashed potatoes. And mashed potatoes, curiously enough, are very, very similar. It has... <laughs> I know, now you, none of you will eat mashed potatoes tonight. <laughs> but it has, the, it has the same type of properties, the same what we call rheology uh, as feces. And uh, so we took it and we riced it and put it through our reactor. And just because this is a technical talk, I have to give you a few of our results. First of all, the temperature rise, the faster we put it through. Makes sense. The more energy you put in, the more the heat is going to increase. And you can't beat the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermo says the maximum energy you can get out of a system is what you put in. And you can't even do that well, by the way. So, moral to the story is, by putting energy into the system, we're able to heat it up, all right, and the temperature increases as a function of how long we keep it in there. Now, most of you realize that to pasteurize milk, you want to keep it at about 170 degrees Fahrenheit or so, but uh, to kill off bacteria in feces, we need to go to a much higher temperature. And so I'm going to switch centigrade to the centigrade scale, but about 200 degrees centigrade, which is well, well above the boiling point of water, is what we'd like to get and, uh, out of our system. And that was actually what we did observe. Our highest temperature to date was about 200 degrees C. Now, at least you think that we didn't run it on anything. Uh, again, our colleague over in vet med um, was able to supply us and a laboratory to, to run it uh, some baboon feces. Uh, Oklahoma State has a lot of hidden talents. Uh. <laughs> and um, what we did was, uh, here we weren't looking so much at bacteria, we were looking at parasites. And another problem that uh, is not really mentioned in the Gates video is that parasites and eggs are a big problem. Anyway, moral to the story, we ran it there, and we did not achieve the temperatures that we did with mashed potatoes, but we killed off a fair percentage of the parasites. And the reason, by the way, uh, we probably didn't get to the highest temperatures is baboons have a tendency to uh, 
kind of help clean each other, and so they get a lot of hair in their feces. Quite different than human feces, I hope. <laughs> so I'd like to also show you about one of the latest, and I was actually going to bring it with today. Uh, in fact, there were a lot of people that are disappointed that I didn't bring it with. But I, this is our, kind of our second prototype. And this one is very cheap to, to build, very cheap to operate. It's simple, it's portable, all right? The motor we bought at a hardware store, all right? The actual casting did not cost us hardly anything. And the black lever there um, is a plunger, no pun intended, uh, to push the feces down through a rotating motor. This one's portable. It doesn't achieve nearly as good as the high temperature one that we have in the laboratory, but it is efficient at putting shear on and increasing the temperature. So, in conclusion, um, so far, everything works. And it's always really enlightening to come up with a simple, creative idea and get it to work. All right. You'd be amazed how many people spend their whole lives not getting things to work. Okay. <laughs> I do want to point out that the shear stress and the temperature are controlled by RPM and spacing. It's possible to combine our technology with other people's technology. There's a lot of work going on, obviously, throughout the world to make what they call a toilet that separates urine and feces. Uh, we like that idea because for us, if we have the two mixed, then we have to add something in with it. You know, typically toilet paper, sawdust, whatever, uh, to, uh, to increase the viscosity. And we need viscosity for our system to work. Our envision for the portable unit that I just showed you was that it would be run by a small battery-powered uh, motor with a solar cell we're talking Africa mainly and Asia, uh, to uh, recharge that battery. And we're looking at running, you know, probably for a family, small family, running once a day or twice a day uh, to uh, disinfect the waste. 